Well, hello, fabulous DIYers. This is Daniela Savoy here, and welcome back to my channel. Wait a minute, this is not my channel. This is Zoe's channel, and in this video, we are doing part two to our collaboration. So, my name is Daniela Tabwa and I am a evening bridal wear designer. So, Zoe and I are doing a collaboration on how to work with a private client. Now, in part one, she shared with you about how to go about sketching and preparing for fabrics and asking for price points and all that jazz. And that video is on my channel, which will be linked down in the description box for you to go ahead and visit and watch it. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to construct the final design. So we went ahead and did a poll for you guys to select the final three sketches of the design. And the winning design would be made by me. So the winning design is design number three. It was a toss up between two and three, but three got the win because of you guys voting for your favorite. So I'm gonna go ahead and craft this coat from scratch. We will not be using any dress form. All we're gonna be using is basic lines and measurements. So let's get into that tutorial right now. So we presented our client with several fabric options. Um, we decided to go towards the brocade um, route and with heavy discussion, our client selected this fabric. So this is the fabric that we will be using to create the coat. The client went ahead and chose this beautiful, large gold and turquoise, it looks like teal actually, um, this dark emerald green brocade. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then I'm going to be lining it with this four, four ply silk. A gorgeous hand, this will be the lining. And then I found this amazing mink faux fur that looks absolutely gorgeous. I was gonna, um, I wanted to keep the, the length of the fur a little bit short haired, not long because it looks too, it would be too much. So this is a good way to complement the silhouette and it not look too out of place. So we're gonna start off with creating our draft pattern by um, drafting the pattern and then creating a first mock-up. So first I'm gonna start with pattern paper. And then draw my center front line. So now that I've drawn my center front line, is now I'm going to determine how long my coat is. And for me to determine that is from the HPS, which is called the high point shoulder. So here is the top edge of my paper and this is the center front line. So what I'm gonna do is come down two inches and then I'm gonna come in seven inches for my HPS. Okay, now from the HPS will be the lapel. So since it's going to be sim like a shawl collar, I wanna have a slant from the HPS down to where the shawl collar is gonna end. So I'm gonna, just gonna do this and bring it down diagonal about 16 and a half. So here is the diagonal. So at the HPS, we're gonna draw a diagonal line so that way I can create the drop shoulder. But instead of me using a straight ruler, I'm gonna go ahead and use my hip curve ruler so we can draw a nice curve from the shoulder down to the edge of where I want the shoulder to end. Okay, so I'm gonna draw it out about 10 inches. So let me just go ahead and do this. And then from that edge, I'm gonna take it straight down 
to about eight inch opening. Okay. From that eight inch, I'm gonna go ahead and curve it inwards like this. And then we're gonna drop it down to the hem of the coat. Now, we don't wanna curve it completely. We're just gonna curve it so that way it can turn into a straight side seam. So we're gonna take it down and 24 inches is the hip mark, which is right here. And then this is where we're gonna start curving it towards the hem of the coat. So that way it can create a whole cocoon shape. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this down straight. Here at the armpit of the coat, I'm gonna go ahead and just curve this like this just to make it look more evened out. Like that. And then I'm gonna draw in 5 eighths of an inch at the seam allowance just in case. So here is the front of the coat. Um, this is the shoulder right here. And then this will be the sleeve armhole opening, which will be curved right into the side seam. And then down to the hip is where the hip line will be, is a curve. And then we're gonna bring it as we taper into, into the hem of the coat. Now at the center front, I have my center front line as well as an extension um, to the peak of the lapel where it's got to go. So this is the neckline. And then I'm left with my pattern. 20 inches from the high point shoulder, I'm going to come down and place my diagonal for the pocket placement. It'll be seven inches. I don't think it'll be seven inches, but I will see if that's workable um, when I put it on muzzle. Once you've done the front, it's time to do the back, which is pretty basic. I'm gonna copy the front, but this time the back will be cut on the fold. I'm gonna draw my center back line. So now I'm gonna trace out the front as the back. Okay, and this time the neck will be dipped at the back, which I will show you in a few minutes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trace this out. So here is the back, center back line. And I traced out the entire um, front of the bodice as the back and then now I'm reaching to the high point shoulder and I'm going to go ahead and curve this down I'm gonna give it a one and a half inch from the top high point shoulder so going across the high point shoulder come down about an inch and a half that would be the neck dip and all I'm gonna do is take and then I will see if this is correct when I put it in muslin. So this is the front and back of my pattern. 
this is the back this is the front and this is what it looks like here is the front pattern of the coat um, I gotta create a shawl collar pattern that's going to be separate and applied when it's time for me to sew um, I don't want to go ahead and insert it right here and create a whole shawl within the fabric because I don't want the seam to be I don't want to have a back seam um, in the fur I don't think that's going to be cute so what I'm going to do is just basically do it separate so I can apply it um, separately when it's time to sew so what you're going to start off is with a big piece of paper and I'm going to just place it right on top of the pattern. I have to extend the collar a little bit further at the neckline so it can accommodate the back neck. So here's the back portion of the pattern. Um, what I'm going to do is measure here to get the distance, which is four. Take that away. And then I'm going to draw the collar from the point all the way to the high point shoulder of the pattern. Booyaka, right? And then I need to extend it four inches. So here's the point. And then at the top where the shawl ends, which is going to be the center back of the collar, I'm going to draw it out and that will be extended all the way to where I want the collar to end. That's right here on the sleeve. So I'm going to use my hip curve just to curve this out and bring it back down to the neck point break so this is the shape of the collar I'm gonna add in a half an inch seam allowance okay so now it's time for me to draw the sleeve and I'm going to just add paper like this I'm gonna just place this right here so I can just hold it in place but it's not going to stay here I'm gonna just gonna bring this out like this Thank you. So I'm making the sleeve 14 inches long with hem allowance. But I will determine the length when I go ahead and cut it out on muslin. So these are the patterns. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of this out on muslin fabric so we can see the fit. So right now I'm sewing a half an inch, but I have five eighths of an inch if I need it. But right now I'm just sewing a half an inch because this is just a mock-up so we can see what it looks like. All right guys, so now I have my mock-up sewn and put together. And I'm going to go ahead and try this on. Um, if you have a client, this would be the time for you to go ahead and do fittings on your client so that client can see the actual garment before it is cut on fabric because what you are trying to avoid is not waste fabric on a style that's not perfected so here is the garment this is the coat and this is the shawl part of it let me adjust myself This is the jacket. So as you can see, the it's forming the shape and everything, but it has some fit issues. 
So what I'm gonna do is I make adjustments. Um, like the shawl collar needs to be adjusted because it doesn't lay flat and nice. And um, I do like the shape of the coat, but it needs to be more shapely. The sleeves are kind of funny looking. So I'm gonna adjust all of that in this mock-up. This to me um, doesn't look right, especially at the back. I don't like the way it looks here. So I think I'm gonna create a proper armhole instead of the armhole that I created. This is not meant for this type of fabric. If it was like more of a knit, it would work better. But I'm gonna go ahead and bring back the armhole back up to here instead. So maybe I'll just start it here. Yeah. Start it here and then just bring this down right here. So that way I can have a proper sleeve and I'll adjust this to connect here. So let me just go ahead and do this. You would do this on your client and the client will tell you if they like the shape or not. So this is a good way for them to see in real time what it would look like before they get an actual fabric. This is so hard to do. For the side here, I'm gonna take it in here about an inch and a half, and then I'm gonna taper it back down to the hem because I like the hem opening. Once again, we wanna make sure that this coat is wide enough for the gowns that the client needs to wear. So as you can see, the shawl collar is nice, but it has a little bit of wrinkles and dents in it because there's some bit of a restriction so what I'm gonna do is open this up to ease it in the back needs to be adjusted and rounded off so I'm gonna try to do the best I can with myself but you would do this on your dress form or on the client itself so what you want to do when you have these slits in there, just add in some muslin underneath so that way you can pin it together and then reshape it back so that way you can get the pattern of the collar neckline. So it looks a lot better right now than before. So this is before where it's like bunching and restricted and now it's more loose and open. So this is the bodice, the coat. Um, as I reviewed my markings, I noticed that this is incorrect. So what I'm gonna do is come in and then draw a armhole because I am gonna be taking off now two inches instead of the one and a half inch. So I'm gonna come from the side seam and just bring this up because I still want the drop armhole, but now the armhole is gonna start back up here instead of down here. So I'm gonna do I'm taking two inches off from the side seam and I'm gonna follow the shape of this. So now the armhole will drop from here now. So this is going to be my armhole. All right, and then this will be the, the sleeve. So now I'm gonna put back five eighths of an inch because it's not gonna have any seam allowance. So once I've done that, all I have to do is just cut it out and I'm going to leave this together so that way I can create my sleeve. So this is my new sleeve. Um, what I'm going to do here is carry this is straighten this out and then I'm gonna carry this seam straight here okay so I also made some markings so I can match my sleeves when it's time for me to match 
um, but I'm gonna go ahead and invert this sleeve and I'm gonna show you how to do that okay so here is my pattern paper and I'm gonna fold it in half because my sleeve is folded in half then I'm going to take my sleeve okay this is the top so I'm gonna place place it at the fold line because I want it to be um, straight so now we are going to trace the bottom of our sleeve up until where the point ended for um, the armhole when we are first cut the pattern so I'm gonna take my ruler place it right there and just straighten this part out square this off like that okay so this is basically the underarm seam this is the top of the armhole and then this is the bottom of the armhole and make sure I adjust that so what I'm gonna do is invert the armhole so what we're gonna do is take this and place the armhole inside of the sleeve pattern matching this and the point of the top of the sleeve like this and then draw in your armhole okay and then you want to go ahead and add your seam allowance all around the edge once you're done this will be your armhole so I rounded it off at the top because I didn't want that point in there and this is basically the drop shoulder armhole sleeve so I quickly went to go see the new adjustments and this is the new sleeve. Um, I also took it in just a little bit because it had like a little bit of excess and this is what it looks like now with the new armhole and this is the original one that was before. So this is the new one, this is the old one. So always test out your pattern to make sure that it is right I finished cutting out my patterns this is the front pattern of the coat so what I'm gonna do is now create the pocket So I'm going to start drafting my pocket now. Um, I'm going to draft the pocket to be 7 inches. So I'm going to make it 7.5 to allow seam allowance. And then I'm going to make the pocket 2 inches long. Quarter of an inch allowance and it's going to be quarter of an inch allowance on the side here for each side. I'm going to cut the weld on the fold and now make a pattern for the pocket. For the pocket I'm going to make it seven, 7 by 7 inches because I want a deep pocket. I'm going to um, also place a quarter of an inch allowance at the edge of the pattern. Um, down here, I'm gonna round it off because I want the pocket to be more rounded. I don't want it to be a square. So I'm just gonna round this off like this. I'm gonna fold this in half.
So here is my pocket lining along with the welt. So I have scraps here um, and this has a fusible back. I fused some cotton fusible here which is medium weight. It's going to give it more body and shape. Now if you don't know what fusible is, it is a cotton fabric or a trico um, that has a glue side on the fabric and it comes in light, medium to heavy weight. And fusible gives the fabric stability, firmness and body if you need it for your project. It's highly recommended when you're using it for pockets, interfacings, and more. So you have to cut two of these and this will be the pocket flap. So I'm gonna turn this inside out like this and then I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch on each side. So this is what your welt will look like. I'm gonna go ahead and trim here down and then trim the corner same thing here and then what you want to do is just turn these corners in side out and on to the right side and then you want to go ahead and give it a good press to press this down and then sew a quarter of an inch So here is my pocket lining. I cut them out and these are my welts. So I'm going to go ahead and place it onto the bodice of the coat. Okay, so here is the front of the coat and I have marked my um, placement for where the pocket needs to be. So next, what you have to do is stabilize the pocket and I'm going to put a bit of fusible in the back of here to make sure that the pocket does not move around or start falling apart when um, it's being sewn. So the pocket is fused where I'm going to place the welt. And you, what you wanna do is place your pocket facing downwards, the direction of the coat towards the hem, you wanna place your flap right up against the line right here. Okay, once you have done that, you want to take one of your lining pockets and place it right on top. And then you're going to sew a quarter of an inch from the edge of the flap all the way to the other end. This might leave seam allowance for the pocket. That is fine. Don't sew all the way to the end of the pocket. Then you want to take the second part of your lining and put it up against the first one and then sew a quarter of an inch leaving quarter of an inch seam allowance around So you leave this edge right here. So what you're going to do is split this in half. I'm going to look for the line in the center. Split that. And then I'm going to cut through. All right. All the way through. And I'm going to stop right here. Alright, I stop the cutting, I stop the cutting right here. And then you see where that stitch is? I'm gonna carry it over with a triangle or diagonal cut to that, like that, to that stitch. 
and then you're going to do the same thing here as well and take the pin out and then you want to create a triangle to that point like this so it should have a triangle in the center if you can see that so I'm going to do the same thing on this side take it all the way up stopping like a half an inch okay and then I'm gonna take I'm gonna go diagonally I'm gonna take this pin out to that stitch just like that and I'm gonna do the same thing to that stitch point like that so you should have like a little mini triangle going on in the center here so once you have that done you want to flip it inside put your both your pockets inside like this push it all the way in and your flap should flip over heading towards the top of the coat like this you see and then on this side you want to go ahead and pull everything through try to make it nice and neat so once you have everything pulled in you want to go ahead and press your pocket down so here is without the flap I'm going to just straighten this out and then just like give it a press here and then on the inside of your pocket you want to go ahead and sew the pocket together making sure that you grab that triangle tab on the inside here to reinforce the pocket inside so I'm gonna pin this because silk is very tricky very tricky to sew you want to make sure that the direction of your flat is heading towards the top of the garment right and then the pocket will be pushed downwards towards the bottom of your garment. So now I have both of the pieces pinned together. What I'm going to do is make sure that I stitch everything down, including that little tab, triangle tab at the top here. So just pull everything out as best as you can. And then you want to start stitching this little tab here down along with the seam allowance around a quarter of an inch. triangle so what you're gonna do next is press so push the pocket down pull the pocket downwards and then the flap will be towards going upwards towards the top of your garment and then you want to go ahead and press once it's laid flat what you're going to do is then top stitch one eighth of an inch at the edge right here to secure the pocket down.
And once you're done, your pocket will look like this. Done. Inside. And then this is what it looks like on the wrong side. So I'm going to do the other side and then assemble the whole outer shell of the garment to get ready to insert the fur collar. So I went ahead and bind my seam allowance with binding because the fabric unravels so I don't want the friction of the lining to cause it to unravel over time. So um, this is the front of the coat and now I'm going to work on the fur collar apply it and then apply my lining so I went ahead and cut out my fur and um, I was gonna trim the edge of here just to bring down the fur length but I'm gonna leave it like that and place the underlining of the fur trim over it and then I'm gonna sew this whole entire thing closed so I went ahead and put the fur lining together. So I lined it with the self fabric. And I'm going to go ahead and insert this in the neckline. You just place the fur from the point peak and pin along here. And then I'm going to place the lining right on top. So here is the lining of the coat. Um, as you can see, I went ahead and did a facing. Um, and all I did was take the pattern and just split it in half and created a new separate pattern so I can go ahead and create my lining so I can have a facing for the front and a back facing at the neck. Um, here in the back, you can see that I went ahead and put in a inch pleat, a two inch pleat in the back. So that way it can be a vent. I put in my label and I'm going to go ahead and assemble this. Okay, so, so here is the neckline and now I'm going to lay the lining over it. and then pin it to the whole entire neckline and sew from the bottom hem all the way around to the other end of the coat. Okay, so here is the coat. Ooh. All right, so here is the coat. This is the lapel. And um, the lining has been inserted and this is the under layer of the fur collar. Um, what you do is just brush this out just to help it um, get fluffy. And then, so now in the inside, I'm gonna do a one eighth of an inch of a stitch to completely push back all the seam allowance towards the facing so that way this can lay flat on the inside of the coat. So I'm gonna do that from the bottom hem maybe an inch away before I seal the hem all the way around to the other side. I'm going to hem the bottom of the coat about an inch so that way everything will be tucked in and then the only thing that will be left exposed is the sleeve for installation of the sleeves. So here is the sleeve. I'm going to clean this the side seam of the sleeve and bind it also at the hem as well because I don't want the sleeve to start unraveling as it do here. This can cause a problem um, over time due to friction and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and cut out the lining as well. So here are my sleeves. Um, this is the outside of the sleeve and inside of the sleeve I went ahead and bind the seam allowance and then here is my lining which is already sewn up together 
one of the arms has a hole in it so that way this can be the opening to close up all uh, seam allowance around the armhole when it's time for installation so I'm gonna go ahead and install the sleeve to the coat the outer shell one and then I'm going to install the lining afterwards and then the coat will be done okay, so I went ahead and put in set in my sleeve so what I'm going to do next is just place the lining through the sleeve and then I'm going to sew the hem of the armhole all the way around and then pull this out to pull it back in and then I'll go inside which is the armhole and then seal it closed with this one and repeat the process for the other one and then um, seal that with the opening in the sleeve. Okay, so here is the coat complete. All right, and inside is where the lining is for the and this is the hole so this hole is basically where you're gonna go in and close your you hem your sleeve your armhole anything else that needs to be hemmed and once that's complete you just fold it inside like this and then sew a top stitch really close to the edge so that way you can close it and this is the where people can go in and make an adjustments or alterations they go back into this area lastly you want to create a buttonhole i did this on the machine and apply your button this is a temporary button for now but i'm going to be applying a fabric covered button and once you complete the coat will look like this and it's ready to wear So here is the final look guys and can I tell you this coat came out fabulous. I mean I couldn't tell you how many comments I got on the street while I was wearing this coat. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Don't forget to watch part one of this collaboration on my channel and that will be linked down in the description box. Also go ahead and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.